Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. This is part two of how to make your own custom playing card. In part one, we created the basic card design, and now I'll show you how to add the faces and other design elements. Picking up from where we left off, we're ready to add a person's face to our card. Open a file of the face you'd like to use. The head needs to be cut out from its background by making a selection around the face and neck. There are many ways to make selections, so choose a method that's the easiest and most effective for you. I covered how to make selections in many of my tutorials. The file needs to be large in order to get the results we want. This file is approximately 7 by 7 inches with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. We need to make the foreground and background colors black and white respectively. To do this, you can either press D on your keyboard or click on the small double box icon. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Sketch folder and choose Halftone Pattern. Choose Dot for the pattern type and 50 for the contrast. By sliding the size, it will change the size of the dots. For this photo, I'll choose a size of 9. You may want to use a different number for your photo. To get the face into your card document, press V to open your Move tool and drag it up onto the tab of the card document. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down onto the card and then release. To make the face smaller, press Ctrl or Command T to open your Transform tool. To see the entire transform on your screen, press Ctrl or Command-0. Go to a corner, and when you see a straight double arrow, press and hold Shift as you drag it in. To reposition it, click inside the transform and move it. To fit your image back onto your screen, press Ctrl or Command-0 again. Position it so the bottom of your image snaps to the middle guideline, Then press Enter or Return to accept it. Click on the FX button and choose Stroke. Click on the color box and choose White. Make the size 4 pixels, the position outside, and the blend mode normal. We want to fuse the stroke effect onto the face image. To do this, click on the New Layer button to make a new layer, and Shift-click on the face to highlight both layers. Press Ctrl or Command-E to merge them. Make a copy of the face by pressing Ctrl or Command-J. We need to make the copy of the face go upside down and be aligned with the top face. To do this, press Ctrl or Command-A to select it all. Open your Transform tool, and when you see a curved double arrow, press and hold Shift as you rotate it around until it snaps in place. Delete the selection and press Enter or Return. To hide the guidelines, press Ctrl or Command H. Press Ctrl or Command E to merge the faces into one layer. Ctrl click or Command click on the diamond to make a selection of its shape. Click on the Layer Mask button to make a layer mask of the selection next to the faces. Invert the layer mask by pressing Ctrl or Command I. We want to hide areas of the layer mask that cover just the faces. To do this, open your Pencil tool. To increase or decrease the size of your pencil, press the right or left bracket keys. Now, brush over the areas of the layer mask that's masking out the faces. Next, we're going to cover the seam between the faces with another symmetrical shape. Make a new layer and open your custom shape tool again. I'll click on the gear icon and choose ornaments. Click OK to just see this set of shapes in the thumbnail window. I'll choose black for the color and zigzag for the shape. Make the guidelines visible 
go to the center and drag out the shape. Then hide the guidelines. Click on the FX button and choose Stroke. Click on the color box and click down on one of the colors of your shapes. I'll choose this yellow. Then click OK. Make the position inside and I'll choose a size of 3 pixels. Make a new layer. Shift click on the shape to highlight both layers and then merge them. To hide any overlapping colors onto the rule box line, go to the layer mask, which is the shape of the inside area of the rule box. Press and hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac as you drag a copy of the layer mask next to the shape you just made. Notice we don't have any more overlapping colors on the black line. Next, we'll add a shadow under the card. Make the background active and open your brush tool. We'll make the size 60 points, the hardness 0, and the opacity 50%. Go to the bottom left of your card and overlap your cursor a bit on the card itself. Press Shift and drag across to just before the lower right corner. You may notice that the pointy shapes that were peeping behind the heads are no longer there. I didn't want to see them, so to save time, I already removed them. To do this, I made all the shapes active that I wanted to remove parts of. I went to Layer, Rasterize, Layers, and then clicked on one layer at a time, opened my Eraser tool, and erased out those areas. The final step is to make a subtle gradient going from the top to the bottom of the card. Go to the rounded rectangle layer, which is the card shape. Control click or command click on it to make a selection of it. Scroll to the top layer and make it active. Make a new layer above it. Make a layer mask of the selection next to the empty new layer. Click on the empty layer to make it active. Open your gradient tool and make sure the linear gradient icon is highlighted. Click on the gradient box and click on the black white gradient thumbnail. Click on the lower left stop and the color box. Make the hue 0, the saturation 0, and the brightness 85%. Click OK and click OK on the gradient editor. Go to the bottom and press and hold Shift as you drag up to the top. Change the blend mode to multiply. Have fun designing your own custom playing card. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.